So we're going to discuss spontaneous change. Now, before we have any conversation about the second law of thermodynamics or entropy, it's very important for you to understand uh, spontaneity or spontaneous changes. So what do we mean by the word spontaneous? So uh, spontaneous just means something that does not require work. So if something is spontaneous, it does not require work. Right, so um, if you're coming off of organic chemistry, or if you remember from organic chemistry, um, and even in general chemistry, we discuss this concept typically of a reaction being spontaneous. And we want to know in chemistry, is a reaction likely to occur? We say, is it a spontaneous reaction or not, right? Uh, well, this, is, this whole idea of spontaneity is a very general concept uh, that really just comes from physics. And so I want to look at two examples of spontaneous changes and kind of discuss why they're spontaneous and what the opposite process would need to be spontaneous, right? So uh, let's look at the first example of a bouncing ball, right? So let's say you, you take a ball, you grab it, you, and you drop it on a sidewalk, right? When you have it held up in the air, right, you're giving it a lot of potential energy. It's going to convert that potential energy to kinetic energy, start falling, right? Um, and then with each uh, smack against the sidewalk, right, it's going to disperse that energy into the sidewalk, right? It's going to disperse it in the form of thermal uh, motions of its atoms, connection with the sidewalk, right? It's, it's, um, it's dispersing its energy into the sidewalk, and there, it's going to bounce back up, right, from that first drop, but it's going to bounce up a little less to a little bit of a less height than before. And then the same thing is going to do a couple of more smacks against the sidewalk, uh, disperse energy until it has no energy left to disperse. And then it's just going to come to rest at the sidewalk. Right. This is spontaneous. This happens spontaneously. When you drop a ball, it's going to do this with no uh, outside work necessary. If you drop it, it's going to spontaneously fall and bounce against the sidewalk, dispersing its energy freely into the sidewalk. Right. Now, the opposite process, what would be the opposite process? The opposite process would be the ball coming from the sidewalk back to your hands, right? Now, you know that this is ridiculous, right? That doesn't happen, but let's think about why it doesn't happen, right? Uh, in order for the ball to go from being at rest to leaping into the air, what would you need? Well, you would need a random, well, in this case, we'll say a spontaneous localization of motion of uh, motions of the atoms of the sidewalk to give enough energy to the ball in order for it to leap into the air. So rather than the you know uh, the the atomic motions being you know randomly dispersed in the sidewalk, you would need for the uh, atoms in that sidewalk to localize around the ball and shoot it up into the air. It's such an improbable <laughs> thing to happen that it's, it's virtually impossible, right, for, for these types of motions to be localized in this way. And so this dispersal of energy seems like the most likely scenario, right, this dispersal of energy. So let's think of a, a more chemical example, right? Let's think of gas particles in a container. So you know that a gas will spontaneously expand, right? We've seen this in the Joule uh, experiment. We just see it in everyday life in general, right? If you allow uh, more volume to a gas, it will spontaneously fill it, right? Well, what would be the opposite of that process, right? Well, the opposite would be, what if we, what if a gas, what would it take for a gas to spontaneously contract, right? So let's say we wanted the gas to contract into this region. Let's say we wanted the gas to contract into this smaller region of the container, right? Well, if we wanted to do that, we would have to force it into that smaller region in some kind of way. It's not going to happen spontaneously. Um, the gas molecules are more naturally going to disperse, right? So here again, we see a dispersal of energy, right? Just like we do with the bouncing ball, right? So really what we've kind of identified here in these two examples is the direction of spontaneous change. And it, it seems that the direction of spontaneous change is toward 
uh, dispersal of energy. So spontaneous change I will say favors dispersal of energy. Right, so think of any type of non-spontaneous process that you can dream of, right? Usually it will involve some sort of uh, localization of energy that just flies in the face of the general dispersal of energy that we see in most um, processes that are spontaneous, right? So, um, so it seems that this dispersal of energy is what drives spontaneous change. 